How's it going, guys? It is 11.56 p.m. Tuesday, July 26th here in Japan, and we have a past level question for step two internal medicine, surgery, family medicine. This type of question all over the NBME exams for 2CK, and I've made uh, clips on my audio cue bank here on the YouTube numerous times on this topic because of its yieldness. Okay, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 72-year-old guy. He's got a 20-minute episode of weakness of his right arm and face. It's a transient ischemic attack, TIA. Blood pressure, 110 over 70. He takes no medications. ECG shows no abnormalities. Question wants to know the next best step of management. Now, what you need to know for 2CK is if a patient has a stroke, a TIA, or retinal artery occlusion, you need to say it's often an embolus, and the two most important ideologies are either going to be a carotid plaque, atheromata, where that's launched off, gone to the brain slash eye, or it's going to be a left atrial mural thrombus, such as in the setting of atrial fibrillation, and that's launched off to the brain slash eye. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is, is the blood pressure high or normal? Okay, in this case, it's normal. If the blood pressure is high, you assume that that's going to be carotid atherosclerosis. Systolic impulse pounding the carotids, causing endothelial damage, leading to atheromata formation. So if the blood pressure is high, we're going to do a carotid duplex ultrasound as the next best step of management. In this case, clearly the wrong fucking answer. Okay, I've never seen carotid angiography as the correct answer on USMLA. Okay, I mean, in theory, obviously, this would be further diagnostic. Uh, or more diagnostic after an ultrasound. As I said, I've never seen it as an answer. So if the blood pressure is high, you're going to assume atherosclerosis of the carotids. You're going to do a carotid duplex ultrasonography. If it's 80% or greater occluded, you're going to do endarterectomy. If it's under 80%, you're going to do medical therapy only, which is going to be aspirin on USMLE, plus a statin, plus lisinopril for high blood pressure. Students are going to get hysterical right now. Okay, because the guidelines for endarterectomy, they differ depending on where you read. Some students will say, oh, I thought it was greater than 80% asymptomatic, 70% symptomatic. Relax. Okay, USMLE is not going to make it borderline. They'll say 90% occlusion. They'll say 30% occlusion. Okay, so as far as the medical management is concerned, I just said the, tri the trio of aspirin, a statin, and lisinopril for high blood pressure. The antiplatelet therapy, there are other combinations, aspirin and dipyridamol. You can give clopidogrel. I've seen USMLE just ask aspirin repeatedly. Okay, so that apparently is sufficient for the NBME slash USMLE. Aspirin, a statin, and lisinopril, ACE inhibitor, if you're under 80%. If you're over 80%, you're going to do endarterectomy. Okay, that's for high blood pressure. In this case, it's wrong fucking answer, as I already said. So this patient has normal blood pressure. It's not going to be carotid atherosclerosis. So we assume that's going to be atrial fibrillation, left atrial mural thrombus. So we did the ECG, though, and it's normal. Okay, now this is going to trip some students up. But a key point you need to know is that atrial fibrillation is usually paroxysmal, not continuous, meaning the patient's going to go home, have dinner for a half an hour, switch into atrial fibrillation, and then switch out of it. So even though the ECG is normal here, we want to do a 24-hour Holter monitor, aka ambulatory ECG monitor, okay? This is the correct answer. So you can do a regular ECG first. It shows no abnormalities. The blood pressure isn't elevated. You say, okay, probably paroxysmal AF. He needs the Holter monitor here. Ambulatory ECG monitoring is the correct answer, okay? And once again, we don't think carotid atherosclerosis because the blood pressure is not elevated. Now, after you confirm the atrial fibrillation on the Holter monitor, which is choice A here, the correct answer, as I said, you are going to go on to do the echocardiography to actually visualize the left atrial mural thrombus. Okay, so once they confirm that the AF is actually there, you diagnose it with the ECG, which it's normal, then you do the Holter monitor, then you detect it, and then you're going to go on to do the echo to visualize that left atrial mural thrombus, okay? Exceedingly high yield for USMLE. Thyroid function test, just, I mean, distractor here. Clearly, if we had a younger patient, then we could consider that hyperthyroidism could be an etiology for atrial fibrillation, okay? Uh, final point I should make, uh, 
Atrial fibrillation tends to be patients over the age of 70, as I gave you here. When we talk about carotid atherosclerosis, generally 50 or older. You know the deal, make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.